another week. Hi. Hi. Hang on, I'm going to move this a little closer. There, I feel better about that. <laughs> what? Nothing silly. Am I? Yes. Oh, we're not remembering to do the thing that we do. What, a wrist check? Yeah, we're supposed to do a wrist check. <gasps> I bet nobody can guess what I'm wearing. <sighs> oh, wait, they can't say anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need to watch. Uh, and I am, uh, I'm inspired, I was inspired to uh, put on a 6105-8110. Why were you inspired? Uh, I was looking on Instagram, and uh, some people had a couple posts of one. Plus, also, the guy who I did that restoration of the 6105, the one that had all that water damage, sent me a picture, uh, which I'll, I'll insert right here. Of the, of the watch on, it, on its... Um, on the bracelet, <laughs> now, he's an old school guy. He's the original owner, so he has it on this like Navajo silver bracelet, this old school thing. But he he, sh he sent it to me, and I'm like, well, it's it's it looked I, it looked nice, and so I thought I'd put it on my own. Cool. That's it. Okay, we have five pages of questions. He, yeah. <sighs> okay, <laughs> trying to get myself mentally prepared to go through five pages. Gird your loins. From Aaron Roy, Spencer, do you have any watches that you don't really love but keep because you know you'll never be able to replace them? Oh, gosh, yes. Um, yeah. Oh, goodness. Uh, many. Lots. Uh, but I think the... Want to coat me in watches? No, I'm not coating you in watches. But I think the ones that are going to be the tops of this are my four Aliens watches. I mean, I love them, but I, I never, never, never wear them. I guess it depends on how you define love. Here's the Burke. You mean the Bishop. Oh, sorry, the Bishop. Sorry. Here's the Ripley. Well, that, that's great. You're showing me. Show well, no, you're Ripley. supposed to show them. Oh. Uh, the rest of them are in here somewhere. There's the Burke. Um, there's this. Oh, here's another one that, I mean, I love, oh, but we I... We will go over that once you find the... Space Marine, whatever's. Well, here's one of the Space Marine, here's one of the variants of the Space Marine watch. Uh, here's the actual movie one. Like, I, I don't know that there's anybody else in the world who owns all four current models. I mean, there might be. Sure, one. sure there are. You're not the only person. I, I don't know. Some of them are pretty rare. I mean, like, I haven't seen a Burke come up for like a year. Okay, and the next is not... An aliens watch. No, but it is a movie watch, an eighties movie watch. It's a Ghostbusters. One time he recorded himself on it, and it would go off at like ten forty six every day. I don't remember what you were saying. Though. This is a Ghostbusters watch. <laughs> and it would go off, and I'd be like, Jesus, God. Oh wait, sorry, I'm not supposed to say that. You know, we're not subject to anybody else's okay. personal religious beliefs. Sorry, somebody yelled at me for saying God like two weeks for ago. taking the Lord's name in vain. You know. Sorry. <laughs> Dude, we don't come to your house and, and give you religious instruction, so it doesn't work here either. Anyway, at 1046, every morning, I would hear a, a muffled Spencer Sayer from a <laughs> It's just one of those things, and I never took the time to figure out how to stop it doing that. I have a lot of watches that I love and, and never wear. This, this watch, it's a 6139 6000 proof on the original chiclet bracelet. I have owned this watch for... Gosh, coming on 10 years, I've never serviced it. Never. Which one? This one. Ah. Um, I it don't, looks perfect. Well, it's completely original and restored. I've never worn it. Uh, I don't think I've worn it since, gosh, probably 2011. Wow. Um, so, I mean, I love I, I, I love it, but I never wear it. So how do you define love? Uh, but, yeah, I have a lot more. Dude, I have thousands of watches. Thousands of watches. Literally. And now I am coated in watches, as I predicted. It's true. Okay, let's move on. Okay. From Peter Chalice, if I were an influencer, I'd persuade Seiko to do a poke reissue. Sabrina, you're looking fabulous, by the way. I get the Mercy Tomei comparison. Well, thank you. But actually, I think it would be interesting for them to do a poke reissue. I don't know. It's just such an unusual watch. I don't know how they would... Because they, they keep doing, like, diver watches. I don't know how they would do 
a poke because it'd probably screw it up, but I can't imagine how. Well, no, I don't know if it's screw up that they are doing a modern interpretation I, of a watch. They're not going to do it exactly the same. I'm, no, they're not. I'm I, going to defend Seiko right. while you trash them. I don't trash them, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, the problem is, is they get key things wrong. They always get key things wrong. I would believe that if they did, I mean, they kind of already sort of weirdly reissued the 6139s. 6,000 blanks, but only in terms of the case. They, they, it was a, one of the, I think it was one of the recraft watches that came out a couple of years ago. It literally is, a, is like a poke case. It has the same shape and size and everything, the angled lugs, the whole thing, but it's a three-hand watch with this weird stripe across the dial, and then it's an open heart, so you can actually see the balance going back and forth. Perfect. Nobody liked them. Nobody bought them. I've never seen one. They're just, and it was just like the weirdest choice. If they actually brought back a 6139, they wouldn't do the really smart thing, which would be to do what Omega is doing with the 321, which is completely reverse engineering it and putting out the stock one, because that's what yeah, Omega is doing. They don't want to be like Omega. They want to be their own thing. You know, well, you know, they'd probably put out a quartz movement with uh, with blobby topped hands. Uh, and they get the spacing on the dial text wrong, um, and they'd probably do a couple other weird things that wouldn't make sense, but I don't know, it'd be nice. The thing is, if they came out with a one-to-one, -one, um, they'd probably charge five or six thousand dollars for it. And people would buy it. And some people would buy it, but then they'd come up with a low model with the quartz in it, and then other people would buy that. Okay. From Tim Lara, gotta say those giant arrow hands are really legible. I like them. Honestly, I like them too. I didn't. Everybody else was complaining about them last week that I was like, I'm not gonna tell my opinion, but I kind of like them. I don't mind them. There's the Seiko's had far uglier handsets. Like I said, I was I've been on the fence buying one of those tunas with that big handset um, for a really long time. I mean, they don't bug me. Wait, can you tell them what we're talking about? Uh, I'm talking about the, the gigantic arrow tip handset like the... So again, that's the one with the, the, the hour hand has the big head like that extinct um, uh, b -b -b amphibian that I talked about. Jesus God. 239 million years old. They're pretty darn neat. <laughs> so yes, they're very legible, and I don't think they're a bad. I like the fact that they're matte silver. I think that's a nice choice. From Just Dix, when are you going to get a dial print machine so you can save all the 6105 dials? You know, it's one of those things probably that's easier said than done. Uh, I don't have, uh, I don't, I don't even know what a dial print machine would look like. Um, I, I don't know that it would be worth it. And plus, I, then I'd be thinking about how to properly replicate something. I mean, it's been a long enough process. Just getting semi-reasonable vintage-style reluming, that's been years of work. I, I don't I don't know. It'd be nice. I wish it would be great, but... Well, you know what somebody should do? What Larry and Uncle Seiko should do, considering he does all this work redoing parts. Larry, you should have the perfect 6105 dial recreated. That's what you should do. Wow. You... Oh man, man, if you want to branch out, if you produced an absolute correct 6105 dial, brother, you'd make some money. Okay. From M. Smith, I have a PVD Black Baby Tuna Sun, which has seen better days. I would like to repaint the shroud matte black. Can you put up a D, um, DIY video for painting a tuna shroud, please? Thanks for sharing, buddy, and your miss. Make it a good combination. Keep up the good work. Um, I, I've I've never tried. Uh, you, there's there's th those things. Those are they're PVD. They're they're vapor dis uh, deposition. So if I was really in the market, if I really needed to have that done, I would probably talk to like a custom shop and get it powder coated. That's what I would do. You know, you go to the pros. From Daniel Gardner, I've been told to expect my solar Arnie in September. So we are going to think about that in September. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll look for it. If anybody has more updated information about one of the new solar earnings, please let us know. We, I think it's probably one of I want to make that video. <laughs> I know. I think we're probably going to end up with one. Who knows? Uh, from Lane Edwards, thank you guys. Your answers are greatly appreciated. 
Question for next mail call. I'm getting ready to have my 17 Jewel 6309729A service and was wondering what upgrades you would recommend, i.e. adding jewels or anything else that would make a more robust movement. The watch is already modded. Someone added a 6309-7040 dial, so I'm not worried about originality, just want a great running and long-lasting watch. Also, if you have the parts for your recommendations, would I be able to purchase them from you? Thank you. Um. The big, big sort of weakness is the lower main spring arbor port, uh, so that would need to be re redone. Um, Adrian Selleck at Vintage Time Australia sells those kits basically to, to redo the top and the bottom jewels, uh, and so that's that's something. Uh, our jewels come from Switzerland; they're different than his, but his are, his are fine. Um, that's one thing to do. But also, basically, if you can, the thing with the sixty three hundred nine is that the train bridge has bu two bushings instead. It has one jewel and two bushings instead of three jewels. You fully jewel everything. That's a big, big, big step forward. You jewel the mainspring arbor and you jewel the train bridge and you, you will be much, much better off. That's pretty much, that's the main thing that needs to be done. So if you do that, you're going to be in a much better position. James Smith, love the Seiko sprocket. Thanks, Spencer. It's Sabrina. It's a sprocket. It is. I actually, you know, it's one of those things. I mean, we just had a misunderstanding, but I think that, you know, for me personally, I mean, I, I, I like to, I don't want to look at my watch box and say, where's my 7032-7019? It's easier for me to say, where's sprocket? And there's sprocket. Plus, of course, we're all S names, except for Willow. Um, Willow special. Willow is special. See, the S name. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there you go. But anyway, but look, it's got sort of a gear thing going on. Don't you think? And like, these seem like sort of this, uh, it's just, it's, I don't know, it seems fitting to me. Somebody said it looks like a saw, which I can buy that too. But there's already a sawtooth. Oh. There's a Seiko sawtooth that already exists. Oh. I mean, I usually sneer at, at nicknames and stuff like that, but sometimes if you it's... You just said that you like nicknames. Well, it depends on what it is. If there's ones that don't work, that people keep... It's like trying to make a meme happen. If you can't make Millhouse into a meme, you just can't do it. But, um, you know, sometimes nicknames just work. I mean, the Stargate, that was just absolutely organic. And this was pretty organic. I don't expect anybody else in the world to call their watch a sprocket. But I will call mine a sprocket. There it is, the sprocket. From R O six three R T O, I think it's supposed to be Roberto. Roberto. But funny. Three times I've bid on that seventy three two, and three times outbid. Still popular. Um, I guess I guess so. Um, I actually I have a second one here, but it's kind of iffy. Um, it's missing a couple of hands. Uh, I've kind of recreated the missing hands and put them on. Uh, it's head only, it doesn't have the bracelet, uh, and I need to look at the movement. It works, it's, but, it, but it's like, it's, um, it's, it's bezel is a little bit more worn than this one, but I do have one. If you want to talk to me about it, you can talk to me about it. From Blake Taylor. Hey guys, great video per usual. Question for your next video. Any thoughts on Seiko's new 6R35 movement in the Seiko Sumos? Upgraded power reserve to 70 hours. While you're at it, I'm curious to know your thoughts on the Sumo line. It's pretty huge, but I'm of the opinion that it's one of Seiko's most original complex case designs with the sunken bezel and those amazing faceted lugs. Curious to know your opinion as a Seiko purist. Thanks, man. Um, power reserve is all well and good, and uh, Seiko achieves that by using, uh, like, sprawn mainsprings and stuff. The issue is that they seem to have a quality control problem around lubrication, so all the power reserve in the world won't help you if you've got low amplitude and beat error and all this other kind of stuff. So if I were Seiko, I would fix that problem first before worrying about the power reserve. But um, I owned a Sumo. I owned one of the orange ones a long time ago when I first started getting into this. And you're right, it is pretty big. The case is beautiful. I wish it were smaller. Um, I think they're pretty cool. Um, I did sell mine a long time ago, and I've never really considered getting one back. I think they're certainly a unique design. Um, they're pretty big, though. I, I, for me, my sweet spot is like 40 millimeters, 40 to like maybe 43, like one of one of these. But I mean, the Sumo, not only is it physically large, the size of the dial and everything, it's a big watch. If they made a baby Sumo, 
I'd be pretty much okay with that. But also, I have this weird problem. I don't like the 12 marker. I don't like how they... Oh, right. I remember. I don't like the 12 marker. But I can't tell you why. <laughs> I, it just got so distracting when I, once I realized what it reminded me of. It got so distracting, I couldn't even look at the watch. It's like a one. Oh, wait, I'm not playing with you. Uh, it was just one of those things, and it just became just to the point that I couldn't. That's all I saw when I looked at it. That and the fact that it was really large. What? <laughs> I forgot. No, did, I did you? Why don't you just remind our viewers about that 12 marker? It looks like a camel toe. <laughs> She said it, not me. But that's when I, I started. Say. That's what I even started calling the model in my head, and I was like, I just, I'm kind of a Puritan, and like being, you know, which means I'm repressed, and and it just, that's the way it works out. But I think yes, Seiko's casework, as always, is exquisite. <laughs> Onward, upward. My braces match my earrings. That's great. <laughs> Okay, was I on this one? Yes, uh, yes, yes. From Julie Hill, do you have any views on Tudor Black Bays? I own a 2017 Black Bay in-house movement with midnight blue aluminum bezel, large crown, snowflake hands, etc. It oozes charm and I love it. Why do people criticize the case dimensions, 14.8 millimeters in height, of the Tudor Heritage Black Bay when there are so many other watches, including Seiko, that sits just as high on the wrist? I personally think it wears well and looks so so good it's chunky and has some heft but it's a modern tool watch at 41 millimeters um i i like them i there are a few things that that tudor does uh that i don't necessarily like uh like when they have like a number 369 dial uh they tend to use blobby top number applique on the on the dial i like the movement they use a free sprung balance which i just i just love to death i just think is super cool um i i personally i like the snowflake hands um i don't know i just I looked at Tudor, and I, I've considered a Tudor for a while. I've just, I've never seen one in person. I never have. Um, you know, if, if, if you happen to live one town over, I'd borrow <laughs> yours and, and look at it. But you live in the United Kingdom, so that's not going to happen. Um, I don't know. I think they're cool enough. They're not for everybody. And, of course, the real, like, some snobs are like, oh, you bought a Tudor. Why didn't you just get a Submariner? And so. You can say, I have one. I, we have I, several Submariners. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I've considered it, but it's just nothing. I'd have to see one in person. But like the, I thought about like the, the 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 bronze diver, the black. There's a there's a, there's a one with a bronze case. But the um, and again, the dial has these applied numbers, and they're kind of blobby topped, and it just looks cheap to me. And I, I don't really like that. But I, I do like snowflake hands. Someday it'd be nice, and I know they're a quality piece. Okay, onward and upward. Um. From Jose F. Gonzalez. Hello, Jose F. Gonzalez. Hi, Spencer and Sabrina. Thanks for answering my past question. I have another low-level technical question. How do you remove the link from Chicklets bracelets? Oh, well, he was acting, actually asking... Oh, weren't we supposed to make a video on bracelets and then we forgot? Oh, I forget all things all the time. Oh, my gosh. It's almost time to start pizza. Well, we've got many pages left. We'll get through it. Um, well, if it's a, if it's a true true like Stellux chiclet they actually if you look in the back of the removable links it says open and there's an arrow click um, if it's one of the knockoffs I've seen a, I own a lot of like knockoffs like Hong Kong made ones and they don't have any removable links uh, and in order to get those apart you have to do major surgery you have to literally take the center pieces apart it's a pain in the butt I have a lot of those I have a lot of those knockoff ones and I don't really use them because you can't resize them. Uh, the real Stellux one, absolutely you can. From Todd S., now I'm going to bed fearing saber-toothed toxins. It's like Jurassic Park, but with only your feet and ankles at risk of being devoured. <laughs> I mean, if it would, if I was really, if I was a prop maker, what would be really cool is to make like a prop dachshund, but you know, the real like Pleistocene one. So it'd be like a, like a woolly dachshund that's saber-toothed, <laughs> but also has giant curling tusks. Wouldn't that be great? You're crazy. No, it's just, can you imagine an entire, do it like a Pixar movie, but it's in the past, but everything is saber-toothed. Even like the bees. The bees? Sure. Okay. And the humans. Why not? You're weird. And the eagles. 
Everything's woolly and saber-toothed. Yeah, but then wouldn't the bees get cold? Not if they're woolly. <laughs> okay. Anyway, from Jayco Community Thrift Store in the Mission District. If so, that's my favorite thrift store ever. I haven't been able to, since going there, I haven't been able to find a good thrift store in my opinion. You should have seen it back in the day. I started working there in like 1991, 1992, and I, in the back room, and they got, the donations that we got at that time were amazing. Like the back room was literally huge piles of clothing. Yeah, but you big said as a it Volkswagen. was because it was the middle of the AIDS. It was. A lot of it was because it was the, the, the AIDS crisis was really peaking. And uh, we used to go, I used to go out with the drivers and we would, because people would leave us their entire estates. And so we would go there. I remember once we went to somebody's apartment and they had just, they literally, the, 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 they had just had a, a sort of a funeral and the, every, the, the, the body was gone, the people were gone, everyone was gone and the, 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 the man's husband was still there. And he said, and we walked in and he was there and he's like, Gerald left everything to you guys, so just take it all. And we emptied this guy's entire apartment. And so, but it was like, there's still that thing where people have a lot of quality stuff and they want to give it to community thrift because community thrift, you can choose the charity of your choice to give stuff to, and so that's great. But in my day, wow, the stuff they had, like you could walk in, you could walk in and you could get the nicest, most beautiful clothing you've ever seen, like pressed and cleaned, like hanging, like looked like new. It was amazing the stuff that was in there. They used to have in the old days, there was a, the floor plan was different. There was sort of this room built in the middle of the floor and that was called the Radio Shack. Um, and I, I actually worked in there and they had crazy stuff in there, Zenith Transoceanics and uh, all these like movies and home movies and all this like crazy electronics. and. There was just a lot of money was spent and a lot of money went into community thrift and they had really good stuff. Okay. Like Razzle's Ravioli Large. Or our table. Or our table. Until the cats destroyed it. Yeah, we have beautiful kitchen table, lovely thing, until yep. the cats destroyed it. Yep. John Boy of Alaska. I love the 48 star flag. Trying to find the 49 star flag representing Alaska's edition. That'd be I've should never be. seen one. They, they must exist. Well, eBay? obviously. eBay? I like the 48 star flag because the stars are symmetrical. That's what I'm saying is I can't imagine what 49, I have to look it up, I've never seen one. Uh, they probably just added one and sort of jiggled it along. Like I've seen one proposed for the 51 star flag. If we it were to happen. If we ever added like, um, Puerto Rico. yeah, Puerto Rico, then uh, as a full state rather than just a territory or protectorate or, you know, they're they're, they're part of America, but they they don't have a star. But if they actually get through to being a state, then then, um, then it would bother you because yep. it would be not symmetrical. <laughs> it would. Uh, we have, in the family, we have something. I was going through, when we were cleaning out my grandparents' house, we found um, an extremely worn, falling apart 37 star flag. And that was from right around uh, the time of the Civil War. Really? Yeah, when people were arguing about how many states there were. And what was the other option? I don't remember. There was like 35 and 37 at the same time, I think. This one is like the wool bunting. It was just, it was, it was just, you could just crumble it to dust. You could just twist it like this Layton has it. My brother. It's, it's hidden away in one of his treasure boxes. Okay, from Zach Toro, are you taking repairs again? Nope. No, won't be until 2020 at this point. I mean, I'm definitely making progress, uh, but it's, it's going to be a while. And I'm not going to give too much heads up when the time does come because I don't want to get buried again. And I'm certainly, unfortunately, not going to be able to take every job that people want to send and we get multiple job inquiries a day i'd be i'd be buried buried again very quickly and for which i'm grateful but no not yet from mike perkins Hi, mike. another comeback from the grave job nice work love the video format showing the different stages of repair yeah the video format showing the different stages of repair I've had a few comments, people talking about, oh, you know, you're, you're turning through the work, you're getting through the work. I was always sort of getting through the work, though this spring was challenging, but you guys just didn't see it. Uh, we came up with this new format, the before, during, after format, so that you guys, we could have more watch content on the channel. Um, and I think it's fun to show. There's certain things I just, I can't show, I'm not set up to do, like when I'm really working on something delicate, I don't want to have any, be thinking about anything except the work right in front of me, but... It's fun to show the stages. Our children are fighting. Mm -hmm. For Neil Singupta, 
Hi, Sabrina and Spencer. My question for your Friday Q&A is to do with bracelets on vintage Seikos. I have taken my bracelet off an Advan 7019-7240 and a Lord Matic 5606-5140, but would like to have a modern bracelet on both. What would you recommend? Well, that's tough. The original bracelets are hard to find. Do you not like your original bracelets? Because Seiko designed a lot of their stuff, and the bracelets were really a big piece of the watch. I mean, the, the bracelet and the watch, and the watch and the bracelet, it made it a thing. I mean, just like just like this watch. I mean, Seiko designed this as a whole deal. Um, you know, Spidel still makes a ton of bracelets. Uh, the biggest challenge is going to be the end links. Honestly, because Seiko had no problem whatsoever coming up with novel lug sizes and case dimensions. That's going to be the real stopper. Um, but I don't have much more guidance than that. Um, unless your original bracelets are falling apart, uh, I'd say use them. JPC Garage. He did a great job with my 6105-8110. I'm wanting to send Spencer my 6105-8009. This watch has an interesting story and also a Star Trek connection with documentation. I hope you take on new watch rebuild soon. Well, we are Star Trek people. I am intrigued. We are intrigued. You'll have to focus about that. It's one of those things that might put your job over the the top of the top of the possible list if you're willing to share that information with us. Uh, anything related to Seiko and Star Trek, we've never had that happen before, so it might be a first. We met on a Star Trek message board for people that missed that video from like a year ago. Yep, for, for, for people who truly appreciated Enterprise, which was a great show, killed before its time, wasn't supported. I'm not an German. Enterprise fan, and we've been fighting about it since 2000. She is an Enterprise person, she just doesn't know it, because I can't get her to sit through the entire series. Because I don't, I know what's going to happen, I know about this indie arc, I know it's going to happen, and all it will do is annoy me, like it annoyed me when it was new. I was amazed how, in fact, that this indie arc not only held up, but it's in fact better than I remembered. Besides. Archer deserved better. Yeah, he deserves to quantum leap someplace else and not be a Star Trek captain. Uh, if, 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 if Scott Bakula, if you're watching this, man, I loved Enterprise and I thought you did a great job. I liked your dog. Yeah. The dog was cute. I hated to Paul. Poor. Th oh well, let's I, go on. Well, you're the one that got going on it. Eh? I know, I know. I have feelings about thoughts and feelings. No, I don't know where. Oh wait, there I am. Right? Maybe. Am I on that one? Uh, yes. Yes, okay. David Peterson, awesome video, gave a good look at how much work goes into these restorations. Mine was not as tough, but seeing this was eye-opening. By the way, my 8105 has been working flawlessly since you worked on it. That's he probably good. means his 6105, but thank that. you for letting me know. <laughs> yeah, that, that restoration of that particular 6105 where it had had a very long and very hard working life with water inside and just working and working and working, it's rare for me to see one that that rough, but uh, it's it's nice to show people kind of what I see and what I have to cope with. That one was, that was the most time I had to put into watch for quite some, quite some period. It's been a long time since I've had to really put that much work into trying to bring one of those back. But the result, you know, he's happy. He wrote me today, and so that's good. For Mr. Mac, what's the best way to wash your watch? Not in the dishwasher. Not in the dishwasher. <laughs> uh, very soft cloth uh, with maybe maybe a little bit of dampness just to wash off if your bracelet's really dirty. You pull the bracelet off the watch and, um, you know, and, and try to clean it. You could wash that with, like, some dish soap by hand with some warm water and try to get that all cleaned up, but you never want to put the watch, you never want to wash the watch. Don't ever do that. Barry Colmer, loving your videos. Always loved Seiko and so glad I found your channel. Just wondered what you would think a decent price for a world time 6117-6409 in good condition. It's hard to say. I haven't been keeping up in prices of those. They are, they, they were really hot for a while, but then uh, they stopped Prices on them didn't seem to keep climbing. I, I think maybe in the 300 range, 400 range, but I don't honestly know. Um, 
And, you know, it's unfortunate they're great models, uh, I, I, but, but like I don't get as many inquiries even for servicing them anymore, which is usually kind of like my bellwether. I get a lot of inquiries for servicing like 6105s, uh, 7549s, 7548s, a lot of inquiries for servicing uh, King Seikos, especially the hand winders. I'm getting a lot of that these days. Um, not so much the World Times. It's it, like even like the 6117 Navigators. I don't, which were a real big deal. I don't hear about too much anymore. Maybe it's because there's few of them, fewer of them available. But I don't know. I don't know. I would have to do some research. Somebody has an idea. Say down below what they are worth these days. C W, can you please explain some things about the SKX? Considering the 007 and 009 are the core SKSs. What are the other 40 plus XKX models about? I have an SKX 023, and which I love. Uh, it's about Keishi. Uh The SKX uh, 007, 009, 173, that kind of stuff. They're all the same correct original uh, K shape. Uh, ba -ba 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 digging through the watch, done to do the thing. Can't find the stuff. Got a box of watches. <laughs> Doing all my stuff. What are you looking for? I'm looking for I'm looking for Sadie's SKX 173, or 007 actually. Did you even bring it down? No, actually, it's in another place. It's just it's it's the mainline case, and so it's the, that case, that slimline case Seiko created for the 6309, 7290 divers, and then they kept it for the 7002s, and they kept it for the it, into the the 7S26s, the 007s, and they they use that case a lot, and they invented it. It's a Seiko trademark. There's a lot of other batches in the SKX line, but it's the case. Mostly, I would say. On page four. Getting there. Getting there. Spencer's churning through the backlog. Oh wait, that's from Randy Novick. Sorry. Awesome. Nice to see the care and feeding. Wait, what? Okay. Care and feeding of a nice. Oh wait, he movie. literally meant feeding. Yeah, well, it's just oh. it's a it's a it's a saying. Oh. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, that that particular quartz movie, the seven five four nine, uh, that had gone some undergone some conversion work. Yeah, it's neat. Um, it's it's a lot of fun, and they're capable of crazy accuracy once they're serviced. They Seiko did not cut corners when they made those things. Uh, top of the top, best of the best. From Sean Cody. Hi, Sean. The accuracy on that old watch is crazy good. Yeah, that's what the, watch. It's again this. It was a seven five four nine uh, okay. diver a, a tuna because it's got that fully variable tuner because um, you can turn it and it goes the this it has like a sine wave effect. So as you turn it, it goes faster, faster, faster. Then it goes slower, 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 and you can keep turning it. It'll go faster, 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 slower, slower, slower. So you can dial that thing in super tight, you know, hundreds of a second per day. And if it's serviced, it'll hold that because it's not being forced to drag around a dirty train or anything else like that. So, yeah, they're, they're great, great watches. I mean, Seiko, they built that movement for the best of them, and then they propagated that movement down through the lines. You can get a 7545 dress watch for damn near nothing, uh, and it has essentially the same exact movement in it, high-end stuff. From two paper tigers. Amazing. This may be a stupid question, but do the crystals come with a UV filter on them to prevent any long-term exposure damage? No, they should, and I've been thinking about it for years, like like a like a rub-on coating or a spray-on coating or like a, a plastic layer that you can put on specifically to stop the UV from hurting the dials. Uh, I've never come up with anything, but gosh, it'd be nice if they did. You know, how hard would it be to introduce UV elements into a crystal? Our crystals can I, I can't no they'd have to reformulate the glass mm -hmm. they'd have to go they I, I don't have the ability to do it somebody should though from dude man dear mr. Klein I have a few gold color pogs and recently purchased the 6106 75 49 that has the same color dial got me to thinking what other models don't I know about that have the same color dial um it's a really unusual yellow because say got a lot of gold dials like gold gold just flat out gold, but it wasn't the same thing as those yellow dials. And they, it has, there are a few, like 6106 does that. There's a couple like sport divers, like there's a 7123 sport diver that has that particular shade of yellow. But oddly, Seiko didn't use it an awful lot. They had a, there was a 7A28 successor to the Poe, 
that they that they that has that color. Um, it's just uh, for whatever reason they didn't make it very often for very mod many models. I don't know why, but it's cool, isn't it? Very unique, very unique. From Carlos C. Hello, I have a question. When you start taking work back, would you be interested in servicing Rolex movements? If not, why or why not? Also, what is a great Seiko non-diver model for small wrist, preferably a small case size 34 to 38? Thanks. Um, the deal with servicing Rolex, uh, I, I service, I, I built our Rolexes and serviced our Rolexes and all that other kind of stuff. Um, Rolex is cagey about, they don't really want to sell parts and they consider that if work is done by a non-Rolex person that the, that the watch is no longer authentic, which is just bananas. Uh, I mean, I understand where they're coming from, but it's like, you know, if you're using genuine Rolex parts, it should be perfectly fine. Um, it, it depends on the model. Uh, I have all the tools to do it, and I've certainly serviced and dealt with them before, and that's, that's fine. Um, I, I guess it would depend on the model that you got. As for your second question, here's one of my favorite non-divers in the size that you're talking about. This is a SUA made um, five, yeah, it's a five six two six seven thousand dress watch. It's one of the most beautiful dress watches like ever made with this gorgeous blade, bladed lug case. It's just, it's an exquisite design. This is from 1970. And these are so crazy affordable. It's done, like these are like three to $400, which makes no sense to me. Cause they're, they're high beat, they're high accuracy, they're dating, they're beautifully made. It's just an exquisite watch. It's a, it's a perfect dress watch. I just love them. Okay, here's a big one. From Marcella Diedrich. <laughs> Happy Friday, Sabrina and Spencer. How are you too? I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I have some questions. I recently purchased an SBDC051, the reinterpretation of the SLA-17, the reissue of 62 MAS, and the previous owner had the Seiko crystal replaced with the top hat crystal for a more 62 MAS look. The watch was also pressure tested at 10 ATM. The original crystal was included in the sale, and I want to have it put back on. One, what is the process a watchsmith would should do? Please elaborate as much as possible. Okay, well, let me answer that question. I can't recall if you've previously spoken about pressure testing process. If not, could you please do so? Um, I, it's, well, that thing, they, they don't use an L gasket on those. It's just a nylon gasket like they use in the SKXs and all the other stuff like that. You take the case apart, you push the old, take the case apart, you remove the rotating ring, you push the old crystal out, you take your original crystal, you clean it correctly, properly clean the, the, the nylon gasket. If you're being really serious about it, you should replace that nylon gasket um, because anytime that gets disturbed, it's in theory less water resistant. Uh, so that's the right way to do it. Uh, you shouldn't need a new crystal. Anyway, you get the new nylon gasket, correct one. Uh, you have the crystal, put the crystal in, you should be good. I don't really do pressure testing. Uh, I'll start doing pressure testing when I want to when I get off my duff and and we invest in a dry tester. Yeah, but you don't want people taking their watches into water. So yeah, that's fine. another one of my things too. But I mean, it'd be nice to, I don't know, it'd be nice to give some further assurances. But I have an old Bergeron style wet tester, but I literally haven't used it in six or seven years. I don't do pressure testing at all. Uh, the process, I mean, if you have a dry tester, you take the watch, you put it into the chamber, you lock the chamber, and you set the cycle, and the machine tests everything for you. And it'll tell you if it holds pressure, it'll tell you if there's leak where it is. Um, the way that pressure testing, the way that it works for both things is that you, you pressurize the watch in air, and then you put it into a situation where you uh, then drop the pressure, and then you see if air escapes. Um, the, the dry testers work because they, they have sensors and they can see air coming out. Um, the wet testers work because if the sea, because you would see bubbles coming out. The idea being that if your seals are bad, when you pump up the pressure, air gets into the watch. And then when it's, say, it's in the water, if the seals are bad, you'll see that air coming back out. But if the seals are good, it'll just sit there because the air never got in the first place. But it always makes me nervous. Oh, let's test the watch's seals by putting the damn thing in water. It makes me very nervous. Plus, one time on my own watch, a 
long time ago. This is actually when I stopped using the pressure tester. I blew the crystal up. The crystal blew right off a 6139. My own watch. Boom. Um, and the watch immediately flooded completely because it was completely open to the water. And I had to strip that right then and there. Everything stopped. I had to go and I had to strip the watch down to every single part of it completely to get all the water out because it could just it would have been destroyed otherwise it was a learning process it was and my i learned to put the wet tester away and never use it again <laughs> two should i get a new crystal no no i already answered that no you don't need oh, a new okay. crystal. three are the l seiko l gaskets usually used and should i inquire the potential watchsmith of this no it's not l gaskets as far as i know i haven't disassembled that case but um, I believe that they are just the nylon pressing gaskets. I know you've spoken about the SLA-17, but I can't recall if you've spoken about the SBDC-051 JDM SPB-051. If not, could you now? If you have done so already, I can do a search for it. Sorry, he had to let the cat in. And he almost broke his ankle. <laughs> oh, the tripped on the cat. Um, I've looked at them. I think they're pretty neat. If I could get an 061 or an 063, I'd certainly consider it. Um, the 051, I mean, they're, they're, they're good watches, but they are, uh, they're one of the watches when I was looking at them, they didn't like deeply move me and I could tell that it was probably not something I was going to wear, but they're cool. I mean, I have reviews, so if you look on the channel, you'll find them. Uh... I know you've shared your opinion on the SLA 017. Have you purchased one? It's definitely on my must-have list. No, I haven't purchased one, and I, I, I won't. They're, too, they're far too expensive, and um, it's just it's nothing that I would wear. And uh, I mean, it's not saying I'm not making a grand judgment about the watch itself. Just for me personally, watches are really personal, and it's not one that I would wear. Just not something I've considered. Okay. From Todd Shuck, hey Spencer and Sabrina. Question, I have a champagne kakume mm -hmm. with a dial that saw some moisture get in and start to pull up the clear coat on the dial. If I can't stabilize the dial, should I just buckle and get an aftermarket dial? The whole watch needs to be restored. Uh, it's really, it's up to you. Um, so, I mean, we talked about this in email. You, uh, did, did you try the, the fine, fine clear coating with the, with the, the matte hobby spray? to see if you can get the clear layer to sit back down again. Um, I don't know, I would almost be tempted to take that original dial and simply pack it as carefully as possible, pack it away. And then, I mean, the, the, the reproduction dials are getting better and better and better. And at a certain point, they're gonna get really good and they're gonna be as equally good or close to the, the originals. Why not enjoy the watch, you know? Those champagne dials, the originals, they fade terribly, terribly. Um, there's just something about the color combination. The sun just bleaches them, and so you know maybe I would bet, I would hope that the reproduction ones don't do that. So rather than have, better to have a watch that you can enjoy, I would say. Okay. From Linda Kelly, hi Sabrina and Spencer. Thank you. Thanks so much for the informative and fun YouTube videos. If I had a YouTube account, I would subscribe in order to help you get the well-deserved advertising bucks. However, I try to minimize the number of social media accounts I have so I don't. Perhaps you could get one of those buy me coffee thingies for your website like some blogs have. I would love to contribute that way and I check fairly often to see if you have any new vintage watches for sale. We have a million vintage watches, uh, just not for sale because I never have time to restore them. Boy, if you're looking for something, chances are I have it. Um, I think there is actually a way to tip us somehow. Uh, I remember once somebody tipped us out of the blue and I was like, that's interesting. Really? Yeah, it was a long time ago. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like, you know, I, I wouldn't, I, I would feel like we were taking advantage of people. I'll put one up, I guess. I don't know. I guess so. Yeah. I mean, it's just, we, I don't know. Maybe we should value our time more. I know we just we're we're weird about getting attention. So. No, and, and, and also we, we we think about what do we deserve and what have we earned. We're not like those televangelists who decided that they needed a, a second private jet so they could because if they flew in coach they'd be closer to demons. That's so mean. To, well, no, to the no. I'm talking about the the parishioners. The, yeah, but that's so mean to the people that believed in what they. I know said. it's terrible, but they were they were con artists. They I know. I just think it's but anyway, I, I just I think about that kind of stuff. Like, give me extra money, and I don't know. That seems like 
feels like we haven't earned it. Uh, we're lucky enough that people are taking the time to watch our videos and to indulge us that way. I mean, we haven't, I don't know. Do you want to tell them the douche bro story? The douche bro story. The douche bro. Sorry, my phone. Wait, why would you want to tell them the douche bro? Douche well, because I already started to. Oh, you did. And they like hearing. Okay, we, we are completely diverting. Basically, yeah. well, I think, I'm done with the questions. I, I think I think that there is a way to tip us. I don't know that we deserve to be tipped. Um, it's awfully nice of you to think. Um, you know, you can always you can always if you want to do something, uh, you can always. Uh, you can always contribute to literacy programs, which is a real big thing that I'm in favor of. Really do like literacy programs or cat rescue stuff. Cat rescue stuff. Anyway, I want to tell them about douche bro. So, okay, so we go to the gym. I go a lot. And I... <laughs> what? I'm just... It's just... I forgot about douche bro. Sorry. <laughs> so, on Monday, I was there. I have my, my 40-pound barbell. I don't know what that is in metric speak. Sorry, people that aren't Americans. Um, and I'm doing my lunges. And then I'm like, oh, my God, I have to go to the bathroom. I run off to the bathroom. I come back, and I see... The, this bro has a 40 pound barbell, but there's only one. Of them. And I had a 50 pound there. I was like, I went up to him. I'm like, oh my God, I'm lifting a 50 pound. I didn't even, I didn't know I could do that. That's so great. Okay. And he ran off and then he had to go get Sebastian who was being bad. So I pick up the 50 and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't do this. And I'm like, I'm going to drop it over my head. Ah, and then I get it. And I'm like, okay. And I do my lunches fine. And then I'm like, I don't know how I am going to get this off. And I kind of like roll my head and get it off. And this guy is looking at me the whole time. And I'm like, okay, why is some guy looking at me? And then I'm like, God, this sucks. And I sit down, and then the guy that was looking at me came over, and he was like, you know, that, that guy over there, he took your barbell, and he replaced it with this other one. And I was like, what? And I'm looking for him to come and help me, and he's missing. And I stole the 40-pound back from Douche Bro. Um, and then I did my thing, and then I left. And then I, I realized I tweaked my back. Yay. Anyway, Douche Bro, he's this guy. Uh, he's... He's a, I don't know, mid-20s, late-20s, sort of meathead kind of guy with a man bun. With a man bun. And, yeah. oh, I, I forgot before you got involved. Um, I went there, and the guy who told me about D Douche Bro taking my weight, um, he talked to the front desk, and they told him, they were like, oh, yeah, that guy, we know him. He owns a dispensary, a place that sells weed for people that don't know, um, in, in town, and he pays for memberships for everybody that works there, and uh, one of the trainers works there, and I'm like, great, so what, I... He's connected, and we're not going to get any satisfaction. Right, okay, then you got involved. Anyway, this guy, Douche Bro, he's, he's a big, young, meathead guy, and I have some personal theories about him, but uh, anyway... I don't know, it was just, it was bullshit. And so I went and I spoke to the front office like the next day later and they were like, okay, we'll give a note. And then I, w I went on the floor and I actually saw the guy and uh, I wasn't going to say anything to him. And then I was like, you know, I just, I just couldn't stop myself. And he's just like, oh, he looks like a, he looks like a, a frat jock kind of, kind of dude. Um, I could say some other meaner things, but I have to, he doesn't give a great impression. But anyway, I couldn't stop myself from talking to him. And, uh, and he, all he did was talk. He didn't like yell at him. Or Spencer's not a yeller. I, I said, uh, I don't know. I just, I told him it was a stupid thing to have done. Sorry, our children are at the door. <laughs> I just basically told him it was a stupid, douchey, idiotic thing to have done. And that she tweaked your back and that there was, it was, an absolutely stupid thing to have done, and um, and that there was going to be blowback. And then and today we talked to the owner. We sat down and talked to the owner, who uh, who said, "You're a watchsmith." And I we said, think he's Australian. We think he's no Australian. watchmaker. You're a watchmaker. <laughs> and I was like, "Well, yes." <laughs> and anyway, but we talked to the owner, and everything's going to be fine. But we call him Douche Bro because he has you know, man bun. Douche Bra. Douche Bra. Douche Bra man bun. Yeah, I, God. So, but he's dispensary is natural alternatives for health so if you're on a weed tour of colorado don't go to natural alternatives for health yes unless you want to deal with douche bra yes <laughs> anyway but it's just interesting the owner assured us that he was going to take care of the situation and i'm sure that he will anyway that's enough i don't know why we told the story of because, douche bra. because i wanted to that's you why i see this meathead yes Big old beefy dude. If you look at their Instagram, he's the guy in it that's smoking a giant 
trumpet of weed. The huge trumpet of weed he's smoking yes. the thing. Yes, Idiot. if anybody cares. I if don't know why. Cares. What are you on? It's <laughs> Friday. Um, I have, I'm going to be completing up uh, the next restoration video of that baby Arnie. I'm still working on that. Uh, we're on day two now uh, because those things are, those movements are funky. So I'll hopefully finish that up this afternoon. Oh, wait, no, it's pizza time. Yes. Sorry, it's not going to be today. Uh, it might be tomorrow. Um, wait, I don't work on the weekends. Sometimes you do, but so, you're not this weekend because I have plans. Yeah, we have all kinds of stuff to do. Okay. So it, you'll probably see that next video uh, then on uh, Monday. Uh, the movement is together and it is running, um, but it is, uh, it's, they're always twitchy, a little twitchy. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.